Hi guys, this is Mark with Strength Ministries with today's encouraging message coming from Matthew 25. I'll post it up here, verses 14 through 30, and Luke 19, 11 through 27. I don't believe Mark mentions these. This is the parable of the talents and the parable of the nobleman's 10 pounds. This is speaking of money, okay? Now, I want you, as a child of God, to research these scriptures for yourself. The posted up here. Again, Matthew 25, 14 through 30, and Luke 19, 11 through 27. Get your own understanding from them. So that way I can kind of quickly go through these uh, parables a little bit quicker and not waste as much time as I have been doing. And I mean, it's not a waste sharing the scripture with people, but I want you to do your own digging on these. That way, when I go back and redo a lot of these videos, they'll be a lot smaller and folks will be able to, 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 to do their own research and their own studying on it. Because the scripture tells us very clearly, study to show yourself approved, okay? First uh, Peter 3.15, I believe is where that's found. And, 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 and work your own salvation out with fear and trembling. This is up to you. I can share this with you all day and forever, but as a child of God, it is your responsibility to get your own understanding from it and see what the Holy Spirit reveals to you in this. So again, the parable of the talents and the parable of the nobleman's 10 pounds is found in those scriptures. Now, in the end of Matthew chapter 25, verse 30, he says, he cast one of them out and he quotes this in, in Matthew uh, 25, 30. He says, And cast ye the, unprof the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, where do we find that quote? That quote is in Matthew 25, verses 50 through 51. Now, I want you to go to that verse and read that again for yourself. Now, this is Matthew. So who's his audience? Matthew's audience is the Jews. So when I say different audience, different outcome, that's what I'm saying. When you read these parables, when you're reading in the Gospels, you have to understand the audience in which the writer is referring to. So when Matthew is writing this, he is writing to the Jews, okay? So when Luke shares this same parable, he is not writing to the Jews, he is writing to us. Now let's see what Luke has to say on this subject. Now if we go over to Luke... 19, verse 27, it says this, But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. Here's my thought process on this. Now, I believe Luke is speaking to the young Christians or the bride of Christ. In this instance, again, do your own research on who Luke is writing to. We know that Luke wrote to Theopolis, so the, the friend or the beloved of God. We are the beloved of God. We are the bride of Christ. So Luke is writing to, I believe, us. Luke 19, 27 says, But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and, I and slay them before me. What does he mean by that? I believe in this instance he is referring to possibly the second death. So this is after the seven-year tribulation has already happened. Matthew 25, uh, or Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 24, verses 50 through 51 is speaking, I believe, of the tribulation period that the Jews will have to go through. Those that did not believe in Jesus Christ and what he did as our Messiah. We believe on Jesus Christ, so we are already accounted worthy. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So we're not in on that. We're already accounted worthy, so we don't have to worry about none of these things. However, Luke 19, 27 says, But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them during the millennial kingdom, during all of these other things, bring them hither and slay them before me. I believe very strongly that he is speaking here of the second death. Now, could I be wrong? Absolutely, I can be. I would challenge you as a child of God to read this for yourself, get your own interpretation of this. But a quick rundown of the scriptures. When the king or when this gentleman is going to these different servants and, and, and giving them money, well, he gives one one or, or four, uh, five, four, and one. He gives them money. Their responsibility is to go out and invest that money into the banks or into different places and get more money for the kingdom, right? And so if we break that down in layman's terms, what it means is as children of God, we all have responsibilities. We all have different gifts. We all have different things that we can bring to the kingdom of God. God blesses us all with different abilities. Some of us can sing. 
Some of us can, can dance before the Lord. That's not me. Some of us can worship. Some of us can praise him in different ways. Some of us are prayer warriors. Some of us cast out demons. Some of us can speak in tongues. Some of us can, can prophesy. Some of us can dream. Some, I mean, there are so many other things. Some of us can preach and teach and so forth. But others of us can't. So in that situation, what you can do, you bring before God. And if you do not use that ability for God, then you will be as that one servant that Jesus is speaking to in, in, in the references of Matthew. If you are a Jew and you're not using that ability the way God sees fit, then you will have to go through that period of weeping and gnashing of teeth during the seven-year tribulation if you don't see Jesus as your Messiah. And in Luke 19, 27, if you don't see and, and do what it is Jesus is calling you to do as a child of God, then you will miss the rapture. And I believe very clearly you will, if you don't accept Jesus during that time, not be accounted worthy, obviously, to escape all those things and stand before the Son of God. And if you don't, and if you're not accounted worthy, and if you don't do what he's calling you to do and in investing those gifts and abilities back into the kingdom of God, doing the things that God is calling you to do as a child of God, bringing more into the fold, then what good has he had? What, what, what use does he have for you? Okay? Now, this is the best, I think that's the shortest version I've ever had. I pray this makes sense to you. If it doesn't, please ask me questions, reach out to me, whatever. I'll do my best to, uh, to help in any way I can. I love each and every one of you. I am sweating bullets out here in this car. Oh, I should have left the air conditioner on. I love you guys. God bless you. If you need prayer, post in the comment section below. I got you. I plan on breaking down other parables, going back through the previous ones, breaking them down, trying to make them a little bit shorter than what I did with this one. Remember to always be in God's will, not in his way. And I apologize for talking so fast. Hopefully this makes sense to you again. These are the scriptures, Matthew uh, 25, Matthew 25, uh, 14 through 30, and Luke 19, 11 through 27. God bless you. I love you.